from Broke to Bougie in, in, in eight um, steps. I talk about a friend of mine, um, yeah. Octavia Spencer, mm. who um, at the time she did that to me. It showed me because I was young. I was in L.A. We were doing our stuff. Octavia was like, I want I came here to do acting and not to hang out and, you know, talk about the entertainment industry. Yeah. And um, she started hanging out with new people. And of course, I was the friend that was like, oh, you're too good for us now. You're hanging out all these people. You know, yeah. what's wrong? Blah, blah, blah. Years later, she ended up being in The Help. She ended up being in um, Hidden Figures. She's won Oscars. She has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame because she leveled her circle up. And it showed me to do it. Later, I had to let go of some people that I knew. And that allowed me to start successful businesses and, you know, to be on Broadway and all those things. But I had to let go of people who right. weren't going in that direction. What's up, guys? Today, I have a very special guest, the author of Mental Toughness for Young Athletes himself, Troy Horn. If you've been a subscriber for a while, you know that I've been preaching from this book. This book has jewels, straightforward advice for you to become mentally tough. And let me tell you, if you want to do something unique and from the heart in this world, it's going to require you to be mentally tough. Before we dive in, smash that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and hit that bell button so you get updates when I upload a video. And let's dive in. What up, Troy? What is going on with you, sir? <laughs> the man himself. I got the man himself. <laughs> Let me pick your brain, man. So sure. I saw yesterday that you have a total of three books. Am I right? I do. I do. And that that's inspiring to me because it's diverse. And usually mm. people are like, hey, you have to niche down, find your niche, mm. find your niche. But you successfully made it kind of the same topic, but not really the same topic. What's your thought process on that? Well, you know, it's funny because I was just watching a video of a, of an influencer and he's like, there is no really algorithm. It was kind of like the first one was, what does my son need? And then I started doing it and the people were like, okay, so how do you do this? And I was just telling people over and over again, you know, here are some things that I'd researched. Here are some steps I put together that we're working on with him. And this is what's helping him, you know, kind of do his thing. And mm. they kept asking. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to put it in a book. Yeah. And that's how the first one, and then, I, then the first one was just for him. I saw that the parents were kind of sabotaging the work that the kid was doing because the parent didn't know, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? It was like, there's also work that we have to do as adults right. before we can kind of help the kid. So yeah. that was that. And then the third one was kind of like, um, okay, so now you have these things. And as you know, sometimes, and you know, by no vindictive meaning of their own, but sometimes the adults in the room will, you know, be interesting. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, so the kid needs, yeah. you know, how do I withstand this adult who, actually it's funny, today I got an email, someone was like, this coach is very hard and very direct, you know, my child. And I go, well, actually I wrote about in that in the third book, Grit, um, a lot of times with these coaches, that's their love language. As strange mm -hmm. as it sounds, yeah, they're coming down on you is actually, you know, I see potential in you. I see that you can do that. And they don't really know how to say it in a different way than, you know, what may feel harsh. So you gotta have right. grit to understand mm. if they're talking to me, it's because they see, think that I can do it. And right. I always tell my son, don't worry when they're talking to you. Yeah. Worry when they stop talking, because when they stop talking, yeah. and it's like, well, you know, well, maybe he just can't do whatever. So I'm not gonna come right. down on the kid if he yeah. can't do it, you know yeah. what I mean? Right. That is cool. So I was speaking to a co-worker today during lunch and uh, I, I was telling him, hey, do you prefer to be called Mike or Michael? And he said, well, funny story is that when he was in the sixth grade, his PE teacher in the name uh, call, he said Mike and his last name. And mm -hmm. he he was like, uh, you mean Michael? And he was like, you're an adult now. You're, you're going to be going by Mike. And he was like, I was traumatized. And I, I laughed. I, I thought it was funny. But then the afterthought was like, Hmm. You should think of it that he just wanted to connect with you. And that was his way. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, you know, the older the person gets, it's like they were raised in just different times, different stuff. You know, it was a different way of being. Yeah. You know? yeah. Speaking of which. So in your book, Eight Steps from mm. Broke to Bougie, I, I haven't read it yet. I just yeah. discovered it yesterday. But if you were to distill the eight steps to three steps, 
what would they be? Because I, I find it interesting that you mentioned in the intro that most books about self-help, which are very valuable, right. are from the 1900s. But now we want to use the same principles, but we want to speak of the nuances of today. One of the first steps that is going to be going to sound kind of a no brainer for me is, well, first is kind of just be aware that there is a self-help industry. But I hadn't, I, before I was like maybe 20, I want to say 26, yeah. I had no idea that there even was a self-help industry. I, like I was like, I was always blaming this person and blaming that person and, you know, the whatever wants to keep me down or whatever. And, you know, now mm -hmm. I'm not saying that any of those things don't have some merit to them. But yeah. if they're not the, they're not the controlling factor for your life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, first one would be like you know, kind of know that there are people who have done what you want to do and start researching those people. Um, that would be step mm -hmm. number one. Know that there is a self help industry and start reading books. Um, number two, uh, uh, let me see, distilling them down to three steps. Yeah. So the first step is mentors, books. The first step would be books. I mean, just books. start there before we start doing mentors. The first, um, yeah. books start because you need to have knowledge for yourself. Right. You know, before I could go to a coach or before I could go to, you know, someone to guide me, I needed to have information for myself. Mm -hmm. Now that I had read it without their filter, because your coach is going to bring a filter whether they want to or not. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so start reading them yourself. Now, once you have a, you know, a kind of understanding, you're starting to see the same principles over and over again, and you want to um, level up. Then, you know, the second one would be, you know, don't be, I, I said this in another book, but don't be afraid to fail. You're going to mess it up. You're mm. going to get it wrong. You're going to fail. It's like, yeah. and you're going to fail a lot. So yeah. be okay with that. Know that you're probably going to get it wrong a lot. Yeah. And then once you start getting it wrong a lot, you'll start getting it right some. And then once you start getting it right some, now it's time to go out and find a mentor and a coach. Yeah. So here's a nuance I'm noticing with some people mm. that you can't help somebody that doesn't want to be helped. But some people are are a little bit ahead of that. They mm. want to be helped, but they still they don't want to try things like right. they still don't want to face their fears. Yeah. Is there something to say to nudge them? To kind of like motivate them, make their fears bigger. No, they have to. No, do it. they've. They, you know, the funny process about this whole thing is the person has got to get to the point where they're like, "I, I don't want this anymore." Mm. Whatever this is for them, it's like this is not it. I'm not going to ride my life out like this. Yeah, that's. They have to find it for themselves, and when they get to that point, and a lot of people have it with different things. It's like they get to the point where they're just like, you know what? I don't know what it is, but I know that this isn't it. So yeah. what can I do to change? Right. You know? They have they have to hate their life enough. They have to hit the bottom. I always tell my kids it's like the only way to the top is through the bottom. You gotta yeah. hit the bottom. And my youngest son is like, oh, I don't want to. I'm like, it's just part of life. You have to be at the point where you're like, yeah. this is not going to be how this works out. Yeah. So speaking yeah. of the bottom, how do you recover emotionally from hitting the bottom? It, because it's easy to carry baggage and then we become programmed and we are triggered and we have whatever you want to call it, trauma or patternings. This is a very interesting, really cool conversation. <laughs> it's like, wow. So, so how do you recover emotionally from hitting the bottom? There are a couple of ways that I think that can happen. And that is you find it in yourself, be like, okay, this is, you know, I've got to go up because I don't want to stay here. Um, maybe someone lends you a helping hand that says, okay, I see you're down there here. You know, mm -hmm. here's something you can maybe look into um, to recover from that. And then it's, it's constant work. Even today, I'm still doing, mm -hmm. I have a coach, I have a mindset coach. I have, nice. you know, um, people, I have books that I read every day I wake up and I'm trying to work on my own mindset and get, you know, level myself up because we all have yeah. messages from childhood, messages right. from media or surroundings that says, oh, you can't do this because you're this, or you can't, you know, have this because it's too hard or you can't have it. It's like, we all have those programming that was yeah. put in us, you know, as kids mm -hmm. and, or as young adults or as young people. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, as my coach said today, it's not your fault that you have those messages, but it's your responsibility to move them out. Mm. So what do you think is the most underestimated ritual for mindset? I'm going to have to say meditation because yeah. our minds are super active all the time and you need to have a moment where you're not hustling or grinding or trying to you know work 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 or whatever mm -hmm. and just sit and let your mind shut off if you will for a minute yeah and i noticed that sometimes it's harder to make my mind shut off than others and mm -hmm. i i find that if i do a little gratitude exercise before my meditation it helps a lot calming my mind mm -hmm. whether if i jump straight into meditation trying to empty my mind it's much more of a struggle yeah being grateful is huge it's because we have so much, i mean dude we're like in wonderful climate controlled facilities right houses apart what right now and yeah. we're like talking on computers right what's really wrong right now <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like we're yeah. pretty privileged yeah you, you have a like a, a you have a boom arm and uh and a high-tech microphone and that's We're right. pretty lucky. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's it's almost like <clears throat> for entrepreneurs, we have aspirations. We have aspirations that are, you know, not normal, not mainstream. And that right. can make us easily fall into being ungrateful mm -hmm. because we're striving. And then we fall into being, you know, workaholics. You go, go, go. And sometimes if we don't stop and take a breather, we're not effective. It, meditation is one of the hardest things for me to try to convince some of my clients to do mm. it's always a struggle and the hardest thing to get them to do almost it's scheduling nobody wants to schedule and to me it's such a tool for peace of mind it's such an amazing tool to have peace of mind i don't know did you happen to schedule or do you like oh, to wing it to stay creative no, no 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 i have to schedule schedule the creativity you know because at least like you have to at least have a rough idea of what you're doing because otherwise your days will fly by and you know you'll wake up running and doing everything not really being productive being active but not being productive and then yeah. you get to the end of the day and you're like what did i do and you're like oh i didn't really do much of anything but i was running all over the place oh tomorrow i'm gonna do whatever and you keep repeating weeks go by like that months go by like that and then you gotta Bro. schedule stuff Agree. Agree. So this is cool. I keep sidetracking you, but I'm interested to know. Uh, so back to the point you mentioned, the, the first one, have a, read books. Mm. The second one, don't be afraid to fail. And then mm. we segued. And then what do you have for a third one? Yeah, I would say you need to get, you need to get a coach. You need to, mm. um, and maybe even multiple coaches, but at least one, at least one, you yeah. know, someone that's going to begin that process help hold you accountable and help move to a higher level because as entrepreneurs we uh, spend a lot of time alone and a lot of time thinking in our own little cave you know and it's like mm -hmm. and a lot of times we're the only one maybe in our circle or in our family or whatever that's thinking i want to level this up i want to scale it up everyone yeah. else is like i'm good where we are we're good and right like, oh we want more we want right. to live a bigger life and they're like uh yeah, awesome. I used to, you know, that, that guy needs to calm down. I used to feel guilty and my, yeah. my, my parents, you know, my mom would be like, you're, you're too harsh on people, you know, like you read a lot and it's good for you, but give people a break because they don't do what you do. And I used to listen to her, but now I stopped listening to that kind of thing because yeah. it's about yeah. leveling up your standards, not keeping them. You raise up right. your standards with love. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, I think it was like Les Brown or someone like that was like, if you're the brightest star or the biggest fish in the room, you're in the wrong room. Yeah. And as much as it hurts and it hates, it, we hate to go, I kind of got to find a new circle, at least for some parts of my existence. You kind of got to find a new circle for some parts of your existence. If you constantly keep hitting, you know, the pushback of, you know, you're too much, you're too, like you might be, in need of a new room absolutely from broke to bougie and in, in, in eight mm -hmm. um, steps i talk about a friend of mine um yeah. octavia spencer mm -hmm. who um at the time she did that to me it showed me because i was young i was in la we were doing our stuff octavia was like i want i came here to do acting and not to hang out and you know talk about the entertainment industry 
Yeah. And um, she started hanging out with new people. And of course, I was the friend that was like, oh, you're too good for us now. You're hanging all these people. You know, yeah. what's wrong? Blah, blah, blah. Right. But even in that, she showed me because years later, she ended up being in The Help. She ended up being in um, Hidden Figures. She's won Oscars. She has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame because she leveled her circle up. You know, mm -hmm. and it showed me to do it. Later, I had to let go of some people that I knew, and that allowed me to, you know, start successful, successful businesses and, you know, to be on Broadway and all those things. But I had to let go of people who right. weren't going in that direction. You know? Yeah. So two topics come to mind right now. Yeah. One is also to riff on that. If about five, six years ago, I told my friends, hey, I I'm done staying out late. I'm done drinking a lot and waking up with a hangover and not being productive. I want to do music. At the time, I was into music. And they kind of looked at me like, you're so intense, man. Like, chill. And <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I actually did uh, stop hanging out gra gradually and started doing music. And um, and then when on occasions when I would talk to them, they're like, oh, man, you, you probably stopped drinking. You probably stopped smoking. I'm like, yeah, I did. And I kind of feel like like small, you know, talking to them like they're, they're making fun of me. But that was in the past, of course. But now now it's different, you know, because as we get older, we realize that the discipline that we skipped is mm -hmm. building up and we have to pay it. We have to pay it back. It doesn't just yeah. go away. Yeah. So the more yeah. we impose discipline on our life, the more reward we get and the less punishment for back, for lack of a better word, that we have to pay. Yeah. It just build, the regret builds up. We can ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, but it builds up. That's it cool. definitely does. Yeah. It definitely does. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the other point that came to mind. Okay, so you did the Broadway, you did these amazing things. How was that journey? Were you always into writing? Was your passion music? Did you have to choose? How was that? Wow. So what's funny about the journey stuff like that, when, you know, getting a record deal or touring or, you know, seeing the world, you know, because of music, you you realize that it really is about the journey. I mean, because once you get there, you're like, cool. So now what? <laughs> you know, because you know, it's like you dream about, you know, either being on a Broadway stage or, you know, being on a, a thing to touring the world, you know, with your music. And then you're sitting in the tour bus or in the van or you're on the plane or whatever. And you're like, okay, so mm. now that we've done this, like what's next? And so the answer is, I think the thing you realize is that you need to enjoy the journey just as much as you, all the stuff that you would normally throw away, like the, oh, I'm practicing today, or I'm playing, you know, this small club, or I'm playing, you know, you know, a mid-sized club on the way, enjoy all of it. And I didn't know that as a youngster, mm. but if anyone's listening, I, let me tell you, the part you're going to really look back on are those, man, even now, like those gigs where, you know, you had your friends there and they were listening to your stuff or you had, you know, a uh, and r guy in the crowd or, you know, the record company was there listening to you or you were just having a good time with your bandmates. Yeah. It sounds crazy to anyone who has, you know, I, who's on the journey going, man, I, I think that's great, but I want to, you know, <laughs> I don't know, be yeah. touring or whatever. I'm telling you, the journey is what you're going to miss once you get to the goal. That's so interesting. So what does it take for one to be able to enjoy the journey? What comes to mind immediately is character building, like, mm. but it's kind of vague in my mind. Do, do you what, have something to what say? What comes to mind to me is, is age, <laughs> which <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping that, you know, we can kind of help someone skip because I mean, mm. as again, when you get older, you realize these hindsight is 2020, as they say. Mm -hmm. So hopefully someone will, you know, hear that and go, okay, I need to enjoy the journey more. So that mm. when I get to, when I get to the goal, it's going to be great. You're going to get there. If you keep, that's the thing. If you keep working and you stay focused and you give, you will get there. That's, mm. that, that's not, that's never the question. And I always tell people, if your thing is like, I am, this is what I'm doing. I am going to figure this out. I'm going to work. You will have success. That's the question is, will you quit before? Have you read mm. Thinking Go Rich at all? I'm in the middle of it. 
I'm okay. listening to it. All right. Well, um, have you heard the three feet from gold story? No. Oh, but it I sounds familiar. I may have heard it from other sources, but tell me. Okay. So there is a story about this guy who um, bought a plot of land when he was doing the gold rush and he was digging and he, you know, he had been told that there was like a huge vine of gold here, right? Mm. He dug some and like most of us, he had success in the very beginning. He was like, oh, this is great. He, you know, pulled the gold up, uh, paid all of his debtors off. And he's like, ah, oh, this is great. But then the vein dried up. So now mm. he's digging like most of us do. And there's nothing. There's just the journey part. There's a mm -hmm. struggle. You know, maybe people maybe people are leaving and saying, we, not, we haven't hit anything in a couple of weeks. I'm going to go back and go back home. And he stops because, you know, probably because like most of us, there's a lot of failure. There's a lot of no one's around. No one's sticking around. Sells it to another person who was wise enough, as you'll learn, to get a mentor or to get someone that understood uh, mm -hmm. fault lines. And they discovered that he was three feet from hitting one of the largest gold lines that wow that had ever seen the other guy must have cashed on that immediately it, yeah. yeah so that's about faith right so here's my theory all of us have faith mm. but some of us many of us that faith is buried with mm. you know limiting beliefs and mm. small thinking and you shouldn't do this and you should do this and you should be practical or whatever and you shouldn't make waves right, 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 right how can we start removing some of this dust it's funny because even telling the story, it's like that's when you find somebody, some coach, some mentor, some someone who has who can help you reach, you know, whatever it is that you're looking to do. Yeah. I think at, in the story, that's what he did. He found someone that, you know, understood the journey a little better and said, mm -hmm. oh, you need to go this way just a little bit and you'll find another one as opposed to continuing to dig, you know? Yeah back to the part about enjoying mm. would you find that in more of a spiritual direction or would you find that in a more intellectual mind oriented direction what do you mean like like would your actions be different back at the time or just your the way you're put together internally would be different to enjoy it more um maybe during the time i you would just just sat in the moment a little more Maybe, you know, um, just like been like, we just recorded an album. Like, I like that's pretty amazing as opposed to, okay, we record an album. Now let's press it up and uh, let's, what's the marketing plan? What's next? You know, what, what are we going to do next? Okay. So yeah. we got this person, instead of doing that, be like, dude, we just like recorded <laughs> an album. Right. Let's l sit and listen. I don't think I even listened fully to any uh, of my albums because yeah. I was so. Well, one critical of, you know, oh, mm. this was off. But I never just sat and just listened to them. Right. If you, you know? had sat down and listened to them, would that have affected your productivity? Possibly, you know, I mean, you know, maybe, you know, I'm fantasizing about the, you know, the, 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 that journey part of really enjoying it. But I would say for anyone who's in that journey, because they're probably not going to fully enjoy on the level of just sitting back and being in the moment. There's probably still going to be that part of, I've got to go get it. But mm -hmm. I guess the message is just enjoy it a little more than you normally would. Kind of like some some balance in the process, some balance yeah. in the journey. Yeah. yeah. I was reading The Alchemist years ago mm. and uh, he went to, I don't know, this castle or this king or this emperor, I don't mm. know, some big deal guy, wise guy. Right. And he told him, OK, go enjoy the views around the castle, but take this spoon and keep this oil inside the spoon as you walk. And he walked around and he came back and he said, did you enjoy? He said, yeah. He said, is, is the oil still in the spoon? He said, no, it fell. He said, OK, you have to do it again and try to keep the oil in the spoon. So he went around, he came back. OK, is the oil still in the spoon? No. OK, so that's life. You got to enjoy life, but you got to maintain the balance of keeping the responsibilities <laughs> or the important things. Nice. I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's a cool metaphor of the yeah. balance. So let's talk about advice that I can benefit from personally. Mm. You've seen my channel. You've mm. seen you've seen my work. What kind of advice, what what a blind spot you anticipate mm. I would have that can Let benefit me, me. Yeah. You have a podcast? 
Well, I guess this is a second episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can you convert all of your videos and grab because your audio is amazing? As you, I mean, clearly you understand audio. Nice. Yeah. Um, so I would say um, a podcast would be absolutely brilliant for you. And then, um, secondly, um, it's interesting because outside of the things like TikTok or any of the new platforms that are out there, yeah. a lot of them are kind of pay to play the idea of organic is not really where the platforms are right now because they mm -hmm. they're past that stage TikTok isn't past that stage mm. but as far as YouTube and Facebook and are you doing YouTube shorts as well uh, I tried a couple didn't get any views and when I post the same short video in a horizontal format mm. it gets more views so I stuck mm. with horizontal well, they're pumped. They're they're pushing shorts right now. So I would say, you know, even if you don't get anything because you were at the beginning where, you know, you're, yeah. you're beginning to dig your for your mind for gold. Um, it's not about maybe you need to find, um, you know, better keywords in your description or in the whatever the tags, the meta tags for your yeah. stuff. Yeah. But bombard the YouTube algorithm with your material. Yeah. You know, and that's shorts of your long form and do it just because I'm putting it up there as far as, you know, maybe it'll help with discoverability because YouTube is pushing shorts. Good advice. But the podcast would be the thing. I mean, yeah, I understand that YouTube is pushing long format as well. Well, let me ask you a question then, because, yeah. you know, um, it's always good to talk to younger entrepreneurs and stuff like that. What are some of the things that you feel might be, if you can share that might be things that have, that have been, or maybe you still see being um roadblocks for you roadblocks for me mm. Mm. so my pace has been dictated by my personal growth mm -hmm. right um one tangible thing is that my voice has ne i never felt comfortable with my voice mm. and i started making videos two years ago wait with your talking voice my talking voice it's okay. it's a little better now let me just say something my friend before you go yeah. any further your okay. voice is absolutely amazing. Thanks. Um, I appreciate that. I, I, the sound, the quality, sound quality of your voice is one of the best things in your video. So, wow. I just appreciate know that. that. Yeah, okay. Man. Okay. So, in the beginning, like, for example, my first video, it was like a minute, it was like 40 seconds, but it took me 45 minutes to do it and then edit yeah. it down mm -hmm. because my voice was so constricted and I didn't know. And then I learned that this is a thing actually because growing up we have holding patterns first time yeah. we hear no we get yelled at we shrug and then we hold that tension yeah, yes yes so my voice was only coming from the throat and i just mm. didn't feel comfortable speaking even at work I, in mm. meetings i would not feel free mm. so that took me a long time and i came across bioenergetics and it's this exercise that releases trauma from the body and you can oh, hum nice. and you can open up the sound box right? mm. So I've been doing that for six months and I'm feeling way more comfortable right now. Nice. So that has been a big dictator of my pace nice. just because I can only produce content at my pace. Mm. Um, so my plan is to monetize my YouTube channel this mm. year. As we're speaking, I have 173 subscribers and Beautiful. every two day, every day I get about two, two more subscribers. So I'm happy with that. And I'm 100 percent. I'm hoping to increase that. And once I monetize, then I can rethink my nine to five job, mm -hmm. maybe become part time or whatever, do something. Yeah, yeah. And then with that extra free time, then I can put more fuel into my entrepreneurship endeavors, you know, put more YouTube content, have hire uh, a help, somebody that helps me like maybe yeah. one hour a day. Yeah. To, to help me post on TikTok and on Instagram because the editing is not my thing. I don't really love it, mm -hmm. but I do it because I have to and I want right, right. I want to bring value in people's attention. I don't I want them to hear the things. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of my short term plan. And also my mindset is the harder I work, the luckier I become. Things don't turn mm -hmm. out exactly the way I want them to become, mm -hmm. but different opportunities present themselves. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like part of the journey, like it keeps yeah. popping and it becomes more interesting and it takes a turn. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that answered the question you were asking. Yeah, no. Yeah. I took you on the journey of what I'm, what I have in mind. No, it's perfect. You know, just the idea of, you know, just your own 
thoughts and limitations were specifically about your voice that you said at that time. So that was something that kind of held you back. And so that was really good information. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. What was your question again? Let's see. Like, what are some roadblocks and things that kind of keep you as an entrepreneur from, you know, that you might have seen in the past or that you may see still or, you know, yeah, kind of keep you from moving forward? Right. I would say that um, some people are more risk takers mm. than me. Mm. I, I, I like to keep my feet on the ground. So I like to have my nine to five job, pay the bills, mm -hmm. live comfortably and mm -hmm. build my side hustle slowly, but steadily. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like it that way. Some other person may drop the nine to five and and, uh, and yeah, and do the jump. Um, but that's not fair. Yeah, that's not for everyone. Yeah. 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 And it's very scary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> My yeah. gosh, yeah, that's... It, 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 which kind of person are you? Because I like to operate from a place of relaxation and joy. If you I'm stressed, mm -hmm. sure. If, if I'm stressed, I may not deliver the energy I want to deliver. But which kind of person are you? Um, You know, it's funny because as um, a youngster, I was kind of like the jump. And as I'm getting older, I'm kind of more of like, okay, let's be a little more measured about this. Yeah. Because, so you're advanced. You're already past all the... Okay. <laughs> you're, yeah. You're... <laughs> yeah, fear can be helpful sometimes. How did you get into writing? Were you a good writer always? Were you into writing? It started with just... Actually, started with the AU Basketball Bible, like way back when, because I... There wasn't anything, it was basically out of a need. There wasn't anything, any resource that I could turn to. And so I mm. thought, I don't wanna, I like serving as you do. It's like, I like helping people level up. And I was yeah. like, I can't believe that in whatever it was, 2010, 11, whatever it was, that there isn't a book talking about AAU basketball. Yeah. And my wife was like, well, then why don't you write it? And I was like, uh, and then I had those, same beliefs that a lot of us have, which is like, I'm not a writer. I, am I gonna, you know, write horribly? Am I gonna get bad reviews because my writing's horrible? And which I actually did, which is you know, <laughs> part, part of the deal. Yeah. But but you know, the, it wasn't about that. It was about I want to have the next person that comes along behind me. I want to make sure that they have they don't have the same struggles I had at least. Right. You know. So, to answer your question. I wasn't really a writer. I just wanted to help someone not have the same problems. Right. So to say it in another way, your why, the reason why you were doing it was bigger than the limitations and the fears that you had. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I try my best to encourage people and the people I work with to tap into their why, their reason. Mm. Otherwise, yeah. it's just because I, I say that our ego not only motivates us, it also want to keep us safe. 100%. So, yeah. Yeah. So I want to serve people, but listen, I'm, they may make fun of me. You know, I'll be criticized. My... And they will. Sorry. And, and, and they right. will make fun of you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just know that they're, they're going to make fun of you. Right. They're going to. Right. They're going to do it publicly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they you have, have to... to. So what we have to do, I guess, is also remind ourselves of the maybe some, some of us have that why burning all the time. They don't have to mm -hmm. remind themselves. But at least for me, I have to remind myself every day, why, why, yeah. why? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a game changer reminding ourselves of the why. And we have also for people listening, you know, sometimes we hear the advice and it passes, but you have to write it down. Put it in words, make it as much more tangible. There you go. Yep. There you Journals. Go. I have actually two of them. I write nice. all like all the time writing yes. amazing do you have That's a structure right. when you write um i try to keep it simple and okay. i try to focus on the next goal so for instance whatever it is you know i you know complete the book but my next book by february 28th mm. and that's what i write that's so it's like you know what i have a long list of like the other goals uh, it's like vision boards over here and nice. whatever but the actual next goal i don't try to do like a long paragraph of things i'm gonna do it's like just yeah. what's the next thing that's helped me i mean obviously everyone's gonna have their own thing but for me it's 
what is the next goal that you want to do? Yeah, amazing. I'd like to be a welcome guest, so I don't want to keep you for long, but let me see. Oh, you're good. I have you're more good. questions. Okay. I'm just happy that we get to talk, man. It's like we've yeah. been talking virtually. It's like now I get to actually see you and say, hey, that's, this is awesome. That's right. Actually, when I started reading your book, I went on Facebook and I joined the group and I saw you were uh, in, a, in a video with someone like a podcast or an interview and you had that image behind you. Greatness demands everything. I was like, man, that's badass. I'm going to put it on my vision board. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's right there. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Thank you so much for asking me to do this. This has been so fun and so cool.